Just a few moments ago, President Biden spoke to reporters uh, on board Air Force One. Air Force One was refueling in Germany before returning back to Washington. Let's hear um, what he said to reporters who, are, who asked some questions about his trip to Israel amid the war. I spent an hour and a half about 17 or 18 before. And I don't know how to say this. Virtually every mass shooting, every circumstance where a large number of people have been victimized and lost, I spoke with them. I learned a long time ago, which you've all learned in your life as well. When someone's going through something, it is beyond their comprehension that they thought or thought they'd have to go through. If they see someone who they think understands or maybe been through something not the same but similar, it gives them some sense of hope. And I always get criticized sometimes by my staff because when I go to these events, I stay for three and four hours and answer all their questions. But it matters. It matters a lot. And, uh, and look, I'm talking, some of you have gone through a hell of a lot more than I've gone through, and a lot more than other people have gone through, and you understand. So it's just, it's just, uh, people are looking for just something to grab, something that, that gives them some sense, sense of hope. And that's, if I can do a little bit of that, then it's, you know, we're doing it. It's done for me. So, you see, do you think it was necessary for you to come here to get this deal done? Was the in-person diplomacy aspect really important here? What do you think? I'll, I'll, I'll you answer that. You joked about the house. Do you have any view of uh, Jim Jordan and his predicament? Do I have any what? Do you have, do you have a view of Jim Jordan's current predicament and I'm unable to secure the speakership? I ache for him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Zero. None. None. Mr. President? How about the hospital, Mr. sir? People all over the region um, are upset about the hospital and don't necessarily believe uh, you or the Israelis that they didn't have anything to do with it. Do you have a message to the people in the streets right now? Well, I can understand why in this circumstance they wouldn't believe. I can understand that. And, uh, but uh, I would not, you notice I don't say things like that unless I have faith in the source from which I've gotten our Defense Department says it's highly unlikely that it was Israelis would have had a different footprint and have intercepted some anyway the, and uh, so that's why if you notice I didn't say it at first I didn't I wanted to make sure that I knew and look and I'm not suggesting that Hamas deliberately did it either it's that old thing, got to know how to shoot straight, uh, you know, and, uh, and it's not the first time Hamas has launched something that didn't function very well. So I, I don't know all the detail, but I do know the people at the Defense Department who I respect, and the intelligence community that I respect, it is highly improbable that Israel did that. Mr. President, is are there Israelis um, operating within the rules of war that you talked about last week being so important? Good talking to you all. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, that was President Biden speaking aboard Air Force One en route back to the United States after his trip to Israel. Um, as you know, he was meant to head on to Jordan to meet with Arab leaders. That summit canceled in the wake of the um, explosion at a hospital in Gaza City. And we did hear the president misspeak there when he said um, that it was a, a rocket that fell short by Hamas. Israeli intelligence is citing Islamic Jihad as um, the, the people to blame, um, while many people on the ground in Gaza blame Israel. But he says the thrust of the purpose of this trip was to give uh, the people there a sense of hope uh, after so many have been through so much grief and terror.